Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Wilkerson Report. Now joining us is Larry Wilkerson. He is the former Chief of Staff to Secretary of State Colin Powell and an adjunct professor at the College of William & Mary. And of course, he's a regular contributor to The Real News. Thanks so much for being with us, Larry. Thanks for having me, Jessica. So Larry, what are you tracking this week? Uh, I'm tracking uh, the U.S.-Israel situation. I spoke at the National Press Club on Friday, 18 March, and I spoke under the title of Israel, a strategic liability of the first order. And I believe Israel has become just that, a strategic liability. There are, of course, reasons other than grand strategy to maintain the relationship with Israel, and I would support most of those reasons, but I think it's important that we begin a serious review of the relationship because Israel is becoming such a strategic liability for us that it's detrimental to our own national security. And this covers a whole gamut of actions, both Israeli and U.S., that need to be reviewed. One, of course, is the massive amount of money we've been giving to Israel, over three-plus billion dollars a year for a long time over a generation, and the other three billion plus we've been giving to Egypt essentially as a bribe to keep Egypt in the peace treaty with Israel. This really limits discretionary spending for international relations by the State Department, and it ties the United States in a way to Israel that it just shouldn't be. Israel is one of the most successful economies in the Mediterranean, if not the world, and giving Israel this handout every year, year after year, is just plain stupid. It's dangerous, too, because it gives the Israelis a lot of leeway and flexibility that as a state where they are today wouldn't be there otherwise. The other reason, or the number of reasons, but the other significant reason we need to review it is because all our hard power in the region is elsewhere. It's in Bahrain with the largest fleet headquarters in the U.S. arsenal, the Fifth Fleet. It's in Gutter with the largest Air Force complex in the U.S. repertoire. It's in Kuwait, the aircraft carrier for the United States in the region, as both Gulf Wars have proven. It's in Egypt. It's in Oman. It's elsewhere than Israel. There is no real hard power in Israel. And all of these other places where our hard power does exist are jeopardized by our unbalanced relationship as Israel's lawyer an unquestioning benefactor in the great power world. So there are a number of reasons why we need to do this review, not the least of which is the quagmire that is Southwest Asia right now, the civil war in Syria, the instability in Lebanon, instability in Jordan, Iraq, and so forth, the need for a rapprochement with Iran, and what all that means in terms of our security vis-a-vis -vis Israel and vice versa. Our security is not enhanced by the way we're conducting this relationship. And Israel's security, as a matter of fact, is gravely endangered by the way we're conducting this relationship. Can you expand on that a bit? Um, how, how is Israel more in danger? The current ultra-right-wing leadership in Israel under Bibi Netanyahu, to give a historical context to it, actually probably contributed to the tension and the incredible shift in political momentum in Israel that led to the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin. It's not going too far to say that Netanyahu and his group created the circumstances that produced the assassin. This ended, for all practical purposes and other purposes too, the peace effort, the effort to build uh, two states, two viable states, economically, financially, culturally, informationally, and so forth, in the region, Israel and Palestine. It ended it. There is no more peace process. So the future for Israel, as contemplated by Netanyahu, is a greater Israel, having secured the West Bank, Jerusalem as its capital, perhaps gotten Gaza back, maybe the Sinai, parts of Lebanon, parts of Syria that's now looking like it's falling apart and parts, if not all, of Jordan. This is Netanyahu's ultimate goal. This is the Zionist's ultimate goal. And so that's very dangerous because it's not tenable. Um, what you're going to have is you're going to have a one-state solution. That state is going to be increasingly apartheid, as the West Bank and Jerusalem are now. 
and as Israel proper is becoming more and more like, that state's going to be apartheid, it's going to be untenable, and it's going to be eliminated by the international community, if not the 350 to 400 million people around it who are opposed to it. So this is a situation that is okay for Israel's short-term security, as Netanyahu conceives it, chaos in the region, and so all of Israel's enemies being in chaos can't attack it. But it's not very conducive, it's not conducive at all to the future security of Israel, where it becomes this one state solution that is an apartheid state and is gradually forced to become something that will look very different from what it is today, even if it exists at all. That's not good for Israel's long-term security. Larry, are you really that convinced that the international community would be so strongly against the, the quote-unquote apartheid state that you mentioned Israel potentially becoming? What, what sort of signals do you see um, would, would actually support that? Well, my historical example there, of course, is South Africa, which interestingly enough, intriguingly enough, Israel was allied with strongly during its apartheid period. Um, but more so than that historical example would be the untenable set of circumstances that this small enclave in the Middle East of about five, six million Jews would wind up being to its Arab population, its Palestine population, and to the wider population in the region, as I said, 300 to 400 million people. This is a situation that's only supportable if the United States remains an unquestioning benefactor, arms provider, and technology provider for the Israeli state. I don't think that's a, I just don't think that's going to happen because more and more people, perhaps begun with the Stephen Walt and John Mearsheimer report on the Israel lobby, more and more people are having this discussion. More and more people are debating these issues. More and more people, especially in the United States, but in the European Union and globally too, are questioning the relationship the United States has with Israel, are questioning the one-sided nature of that relationship, and even looking into and examining the history of the whole situation and finding out it's very different than what the Israeli propagandists and public affairs people have told us, that it's more akin to the U.S. from 1866 to 1890 and the Indian Wars, when we ethnically cleansed our entire West virtually, it's more akin to that than it is to the Jewish people having a home state in the Middle East in the heart of Palestine. When you put these things together, when you put this deeper understanding of the history and a real codification of what the situation is today, no matter how much soul felt heart you might have for Israel, no matter how much interest you might have in their democracies surviving, no matter how much you might feel you need to assuage your guilt over the Holocaust and so forth and so on, it's very diff difficult to do the real politique of it and to justify what the United States has been doing and what it increasingly looks like it's going to do even more of. Netanyahu, for example, is uh, he's arguing now for five or six billion a year. Um, and he's arguing for more and deeper relationships, military to military and intel to intel. This is a dangerous situation for the United States to get in. And I'll remind the American people of what George Washington said, referring to France primarily at the time, of how dangerous it is for the United States to make it, its interest congruent with completely another state's interest. Mm. What we've done with Israel is make Israel's interest our interest, as if we were the same states. People have said, well, Israel should just become the 51st state. They're not too far off in that in terms of the relations we have with her today. The last time I spoke this way on your show, um, I compromised my ability to work for the Bernie Sanders campaign. <laughs> so, so now I've probably foreclosed my ability to work for anyone because it's, <laughs> it's, it's very hard to see how at present pace, this situation is going to change because the ultra-right wing of Israel has captured APAC, and APAC has captured the United States Congress, and to a, cert a certain extent, the Oval Office as well. Well, Larry, you're always welcome here on The Real News. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much, Jessica. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.